Welcome to Cyberflow, your one-stop shop for free cybersecurity education. We offer courses and tutorials to help you master networking, cybersecurity, and ethical hacking. Subscribe and support us to raise $100,000 for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Help us make a difference in the lives of children and families facing serious illnesses. Find the links in the description below for our Anki flashcards and donation options. Let's get started. Introduction. All right, class. Today we're going to dive into Layer 3, the network layer of the OSI model. Layer 3 plays a crucial role in providing connectivity between devices on different networks. It uses logical addressing with IP addresses, enabling communication across networks. Layer 3 is responsible for selecting the best path for data transmission, especially in complex networks like the Internet. Routers, operating at Layer 3, are the key players in directing traffic between networks. So let's buckle up and explore the Layer 3 of the OSI model. OSI model, Network Layer Review. Before we jump into Layer 3, let's quickly review the OSI model. The OSI model stands for the Open Systems Interconnection Model and consists of seven layers that define how data is transmitted over a network. The network layer, also known as Layer 3, is the third layer in this model. Its primary function is to provide logical addressing and routing of data packets between different networks. Think of it as the traffic cop of the networking world, directing data to its proper destination. Intro to routing. Now that we understand the basics, let's talk about routing. Routing is the process of selecting the best path for data transmission from the source to the destination. In a network with multiple interconnected routers, the routers work together to determine the most efficient route for data to travel. They consider factors like network congestion, link quality, and administrative preferences to ensure that data takes the shortest and most reliable route to its destination. Routing is especially crucial in complex networks like the Internet, where data can traverse multiple networks before reaching its final destination. IPv4 Header When data is transmitted over Layer 3, it is encapsulated in IP packets. An IP packet consists of a header and payload. The header contains important information, such as the source and destination IP addresses, as well as other control information. Think of the header as an envelope that carries the data to its intended recipient. The payload, on the other hand, carries the actual data being transmitted, whether it's a text message, an email, or a web page. IPv4. Addresses. Now let's take a closer look at IP addresses. In the world of networking, IP, Internet Protocol, is the primary Layer 3 protocol used today. IP version 4, IPv4, is the most widely used version, although IPv6 is gradually gaining traction to accommodate the growing number of devices on the Internet. IPv4 addresses are 32-bit numbers represented in dotted decimal notation, such as 192.168.0.1. This format allows for approximately 4.3 billion unique addresses. However, due to the rapid growth of the Internet, the availability of IPv4 addresses has become limited. To mitigate this issue, IPv6 was introduced. IPv6 addresses are 128-bit numbers represented in hexadecimal notation. This format allows for an enormous number of unique addresses, approximately 340 undecillion addresses. Decimal and hexadecimal review. Before we delve further into IP addresses, let's do a quick review of decimal and hexadecimal numbering systems. Decimal is the familiar base 10 system we use every day, ranging from 0 to 9. Hexadecimal, on the other hand, is a base 16 system that includes numbers from 0 to 9 and letters from A to F, representing values from 10 to 15. Why is hexadecimal important? Well, when representing IPv6 addresses, which are 128-bit numbers, hexadecimal provides a more concise and manageable way to express such large values. Binary number system. To understand IP addresses better, we need to talk about the binary number system. Computers communicate using binary, a base-2 numbering system, which consists of only two digits, 0 and 1. Each digit in a binary number is called a bit, and a group of 8 bits is called a byte. Computers store and process data using these bits and bytes. Binary to decimal conversion practice. Let's put our binary knowledge to the test. I'll give you a binary number, and I want you to convert it to decimal. For example, let's convert 10110 to decimal. Using the place value system, we assign weights to each bit, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Multiply each bit t by its corresponding weight, and then sum them up. Decimal to binary conversion practice. Now let's do the reverse. 
I'll give you a decimal number and you convert it to binary. For example, let's convert 42 to binary. Start by dividing the decimal number by 2 and noting the remainder. Keep dividing the quotient by 2 until you reach 0, noting the remainders each time. Then, write down the remainders in reverse order to get the binary representation. So for 42, the remainders are 101010. IPv4 addresses, network portion, host portion. Now that we've covered binary and decimal conversions, let's talk about IP address structure. An IPv4 address consists of two parts, the network portion and the host portion. The network portion identifies the network to which the device belongs, while the host portion identifies the specific device on that network. The division between the network and host portions varies depending on the IP address class. Let's use the example of the IP address 192.168.10.10/24 to understand the network and host portions. In this case, the IP address 192.168.10.10 is given along with the subnet mask slash 24. The subnet mask indicates that the first 24 bits are dedicated to the network portion, and the remaining 8 bits are for the host portion. Let's represent the IP address and subnet mask in binary form. Now, let's separate the IP address into the network and host portions based on the subnet mask. Therefore, in the example IP address 192.168.10.10 24, the network portion is 192, 168.10, and the host portion is 10. This means that all devices within the network 192, 168.10 have any value in the host portion, ranging from 0 to 255, except for the value 10, which is reserved for the specific device with that IP address. It's important to note that the division between the network and host portions may vary depending on the subnet mask specified. In this case, since the subnet mask is slash 24, the first 24 bits represent the network portion, and the remaining 8 bits represent the host portion. IPv4 Address Classes IP addresses are divided into classes based on their network portion. There are three primary classes, A, B, and C. Each class has a specific range of IP addresses and rules for dividing the network and host portions. Class A addresses have a large network portion, and a smaller host portion, making them suitable for large networks. The first bit of a Class A address is always zero, allowing for seven bits to identify the network and 24 bits for hosts. Class B addresses have a moderately sized network portion and host portion, making them suitable for medium-sized networks. The first two bits of a Class B address are always one zero, allowing for 14 bits to identify the network and 16 bits for hosts. Class C addresses have a small network portion and a larger host portion, making them suitable for small networks. The first three bits of a class C address are always 110, allowing for 21 bits to identify the network and 8 bits for hosts. Loopback addresses classes D, E. Before we move on, let's not forget about loopback addresses. Loopback addresses are a special range of IP addresses reserved for testing network interfaces on the local machine. The most commonly used loopback address is 127.0.0.1, which always refers to the local host itself. It's like talking to yourself within the computer. All right, let's continue our journey through IPv4 address classes. We've covered class A, B, and C so far. However, there are two more classes, class D and class E, that are reserved for special purposes. Class D addresses are used for multicast communication, where data is sent to multiple recipients simultaneously. These addresses start with the first four bits being 1110. Class E addresses are reserved for future use and experimental purposes. They start with the first four bits being 1111. Network address, broadcast address. Remember, the network address is the lowest address in a network range, and it helps us identify the network itself. The host portion bits in the network address are always set to zero. On the other hand, the broadcast address is the highest address in a network range, and it allows us to send messages to all devices within the network. The host portion bits in the broadcast address are always set to one. Let's illustrate this with an example. Imagine we have an IP address with all zeros in the host portion. For simplicity, let's take the IP address 192.168.46.0, which has a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. After converting the IP address to binary, we get 192.168.46.0, 
the host portion of the IP address is all zeros. This means that this address cannot be assigned to any specific host on the network. It's reserved as the network address itself. So, in this case, 192.168.46.0 is our network address. Now let's take the IP address 192.168.46.255, which still has the same subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, converting the IP address to binary, we get 192.168.46.255, the host portion of the IP address is all ones. This indicates that this address cannot be assigned to any specific host either. Instead, it serves as the broadcast address for our network. Any message sent to 192.168.46.255 will be received by all devices within that network. We hope this video helped you on your journey towards becoming a cybersecurity expert. Remember to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our latest content. And if you found our videos helpful, please give us a thumbs up and share them with your friends and colleagues. Don't forget to check out the links in description for our Anki flashcards and to donate to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Your support can make a real difference in the lives of those in need. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.